The last panel of the evening, a very exciting one indeed. Uh, my name is Just Jamie, they, them, and I want to welcome you to an hour with uh, VR chat staff. Uh, we have invited uh, trans and non-binary VR chat staff to uh, discuss with us today both about working uh, at VR chat and within the VR and XR industry in general. So I just, uh, I want to welcome you all here today. Thank you for coming. And if we can just open up this panel, just kind of going down the line, if you don't mind introducing yourselves um, yeah, and say, you know, your name and uh, what you do at VR Chat, please. We'll start with you, Phelan. <laughs> okay. Hi, um, I'm Phelan, or Chelsea, depending on how fluffy you happen to be at the moment. Um, I'm a client <laughs> engineer at VR Chat. Uh, she, they, uh, but it's in my name, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm I'm Tiki. Uh, I am a web engineer at VR Chat. Uh, I touch all sorts of things there. Um, uh, she and her. Hi, I'm On. I'm a senior systems designer and UX team lead at VR Chat. Uh, they he pronouns. Yes, um, my name is JC. I am also a senior design, or designer on the UX team at VRChat. In fact, actually, he's my boss. Um, <laughs> Non-binary, they, them pronouns. Hey, everyone. I'm Flair. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm the social media and community manager for VRChat. Thank you so much. So the first question I have for you tonight is, um, before starting work at VR Chat, were you already in the VR XR industry, or did VR Chat kind of get you into it? Um, we can go down the line, or you know, whoever wants to speak can go ahead. Um, yeah. Um, so, not strictly speaking, um, I spent most of my early career in kind of embedded home devices, um, followed by a really long stretch in basically network companies, but mostly focusing on optimization. So very general programming. Um, oh, very cool. Yeah, uh, no, I, I wasn't in the, the VR or XR industries beforehand. I was doing general tech uh, programming stuff uh, in, in web stuff. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so not, not exactly. I have um, a pretty long career in tech, uh, but I wasn't really interested in VR, although I was working... Uh, I have a kind of parallel career as an academic working on stage performance and technology, and I was doing a bunch of work with mixed reality. And it was really COVID, actually. So we actually had to move. Uh, we had a series of six events that we were hosting, and we moved them online. Um, and that's how I got sucked into VR. So that was, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I did actually have a, a fairly long-standing career in uh, XR before VR Chat. Um, I used to work at a company called Holos, uh, where we were making training and education software. Uh, we leaned really hard on interactions. It's all about hand tracking and body tracking. And before that, I worked for a game studio called uh, Block Interval. So yeah, big fan of VR since day one because it's like, wow, I've got control over a human's visual sense and all this body tracking. I can do so much with this. <laughs> Love it. JC has so much VR experience. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. Um, I only started working in game development about five years ago, around the same time that I started VR Chat, actually. But before this, I worked at an Indian Boston, and then I worked for a AAA studio in Maryland uh, before coming to VR Chat. Okay, so a couple of you actually really do have like some VR experience, you know, before working at VR Chat, and I actually like to um, expand on that uh, a little bit. Um, on, if you don't mind talking, you said you know you got sucked into VR. Can you talk to to us a little <laughs> bit about how exactly you <laughs> sure. got sucked into VR? Yeah, sure. So, um, so it, while it's true that I, I I wasn't specifically like in the games industry or in in VR at all, as I said, I had a, quite a bit of background in the tech industry and and virtual worlds as well. Like I'm 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 fairly old, which I mentioned just because. Uh, so I'm 45, but I mentioned that because I was a young nerd on the internet, like when I was probably too young to be on the internet, and so I started in text-based virtual worlds when I was like 12 or 13. Um, so virtual worlds uh, is something that I'm super familiar with. Um, and I was also a, a, an alpha tester for uh, Second Life. Um, so I was on Linden Lab for a really long time. And I worked for um, IBM when we were doing an integration with them. So I spent like two years just building stuff in 
um, in 3D. So again, it wasn't VR, but I kind of had that background. And then <laughs> what happened was that uh, I ended up through my academic work going back to sort of basics. And I was like, what I'm really interested in in there was people who are building uh, different alternate histories of the world. Like, so layering, using technology to layer their own identities and their own perceptions of, the, of things onto the world around them. And that was mostly lower tech because I was looking for more democratic interfaces. So doing a lot of web-based stuff, doing a lot of text-based stuff. Um, so that was kind of the, the theater type thing that we were doing with, uh, um, I was working with a university in Canada. And then COVID hit and we had to move online. So one of our six conferences was in alt space. And actually what happened was I went to the conference and I was like, I hate this. And I'm not trashing alt space. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, VR kind of sucks. I don't really like this. Like, like the social feels really awkward. I don't have any legs. Like everything just felt kind of weird. <laughs> um, and so I was complaining to a friend of mine. And then I went back on Second Life, which I hadn't really been on for a while. And a friend was like, come with me. And they dragged me onto VR chat. I was like, this is pretty cool. Um, so that's how I, I sort of almost literally got got pulled onto VR chat, and I'm very glad I did. Yeah, I can definitely relate to that sort of the being online <laughs> to two young tech tech space worlds, and, we and uh, the 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 second life to VR chat pipeline seems very real. I know so many people who who have come here originally starting on uh -huh. uh, Second Life, so that's very very cool. Um, JC, same question for you. Do you mind telling us a little bit about your experience? Oh, so like starting in VR and then how I found my way to VR chat? Yes, please. Okay, yeah. So um, I, I got into VR because I, from day one, I was very much the kind of person who treasures like a relationship with technology, like a big human computer interaction person. Um, and so a friend of mine was t telling me about this cool new thing called the Oculus Rift DK2. Um, and cause I had been, I had been looking for some kind of head mounted display. I was like, oh, well, if I'm going to be with my computer all the time and have a better connection with it, I need a better interface. Okay, cool. Something goes on the eyes. Um, and so then after I, I got it and I, I, loaded up titans of space and I remember sitting in the spaceship and looking up and seeing like the sun next to me as one-to-one -one scale as you could get inside of a head-mounted display and it was like oh this is my career now and I just immediately <laughs> switched tracks to VR um and so after lots of just going deep on that being like okay how much of a person's body mind can we really hook up to a computer with this whole VR thing um I was working at my last company and I found my way into VR chat because the first time I went there, I kind of bounced off it because it was like 2016. VR chat was in a, a booth across from us at SVVR. Um, so I went home and I tried it and none of the avatars were there. And I remember I walked into a meetup that was like developers and a, a handful of players. Somebody said hi to me, right? And I just, nope, just <laughs> left immediately. I was like, do not, do not perceive me. Um, <laughs> but eventually I found my way back in because uh, um, a whole bunch of people were playing it on Twitter, actually, and it oh. looked very different. There were all sorts of comfortable avatars, and I saw people playing with like worlds and identity and stuff, and I'm like, all right, that's worth a second shot. And then it immediately impacted the direction of the product I was building at the time, and then eventually I found my way on the team because it really is the best place to be in all of VR right now. Thank you. It, it, this segues perfectly um, <laughs> into my next question. I actually wanted to ask all of you if there were other like non uh, VR uh, or virtual spaces, virtual worlds uh, that you have frequented before coming into VR chat. Um, and if so, what kind of worlds were those? And did they kind of help like uh, foster an interest uh, or curiosity about VR chat? Um, uh, Flair, uh, how about we start with you on the end there and move oh, back around? Oh, we're switching it out. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I guess <laughs> I guess my first thought before VR was really, you know, a thing, especially for me growing up. I had very limited access to computers. I played a lot of MMOs, so like RuneScape, Wizard 101, uh, World of Warcraft, things like that. And that's where I started to foster communities and online communities. Um, I was really interested in things like that. Even now, I play a lot of Final Fantasy online as well. Um, and that's part of the reason I came to VRChat was I wanted to meet more people like me. And when I had moved to Boston for the first time by myself, I didn't have any friends. And I saw these funny little Knuckles memes running around. 
And I said, wow, there's a lot of people on here. Maybe there's someone on here that I could make a connection with. And I have never left. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Tiki, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been in our second life as well. Yep. Guilty. Um, I, even stuff on IRC. Um, and yeah, uh, like, uh, uh, I, I feel like Gary's mod kind of counts, uh, a little bit. Um, but yeah, second life was where I spent a whole bunch of my time, like getting into this kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'm glad to see, uh, dark spot designs is now doing VR chat stuff. It's all cyclical. <laughs> <laughs> All fold into each other, yes. And how about you? Um, I was I'm also a IRC alumni, I guess. Um <laughs> I was super into Second Life conceptually back when I was like an early teenager, I think, like around 2006 or something like that. Um the custom content, like the flexibility was really cool. I don't really think I had a huge like social presence there. It was all just wanting to mess with stuff and kind of be able to share content like in an immediate way. Um, I think I ended up leaving a little sooner than I would have otherwise, because it was back before they allowed mesh uploads. So, like, kind of oh, at okay. a very low level, you yeah. could do a lot of stuff. So I kind of gave up on that after a little while. Um, but, yeah, I pretty much until, you know, I moved out after college, I was all online social spaces. Mm. And to better explain to the audience what you mean by mesh uploads, I believe I joined Second Life in the mesh upload era. But if I remember correctly, when you uh, use Second Life, you can only use the primitives. That's what they call the the like the mm -hmm. yep. uh, sphere and the cube and the plane uh, that were provided to you within Second Life. You couldn't actually upload anything extra. Is that mm -hmm. right? The yeah, um, they were still kind of like sorting out the situation of how content could be uploaded like in pure mesh form. So everything had to be built out of like primitive solids, so like little spheres or cubes or, you know, boxes and things like that. So everything was like, like I, I have a furry avatar from back then and it's like kind of looks like a, a foam mask that's been taped together. It had a yeah. little bit of that vibe. <laughs> So, All a little bit blobby uh, back in that day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask all of you if you were all VR Chat users before joining the VR Chat staff, but I feel like I know what the answer to that is. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a pretty yeah. re resounding yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Admittedly, I was only on it for about a year before I joined, but that still counts. <laughs> it it, it yeah. definitely still counts. Yeah. Like, um, can yeah. I ask what first interested, especially, I, I'm especially curious to hear from those who weren't in the VR XR industry, you know, before joining VR chat, before joining VR chat staff, like what first got you interested in VR XR, you know, and, and what made you think maybe, cause you know, there's always, there are always people who are like, oh, I enjoy this as a sort of hobbyist thing, but what, you know, mm -hmm. when did it first click for you that you're like, oh, maybe I'd like to work in this industry. Um, so, I mean, beyond like what I've done for career work, which is just like very generic kind of software stuff, um, I've spent a whole lot of time on open source VR projects. Um, and I think even before that, it's really hard to say what first interested me because um, I r filled up a little notebook when I was six or seven with VR ideas for like games and stuff <laughs> to make. I was a very early nerd. Um, so I guess it's the most predestined career choice I could have made. Um, but I've always been fascinated with VR chat in particular, the degree of self-expression that people have. I've always wanted to try and make it easier for people to, you know, make their content and make themselves on the platform. Um, so that's kind of how I started moving in this direction, I guess. Yeah, I think that's how a lot of people are drawn in, you know, being able to see exactly how much customization and freedom is, you know, mm available to them on on a platform like this yeah yeah uh myself um for the longest time i was a bit of a vr skeptic uh a friend showed me back in the day like google earth on a uh, a vive or something and i was like i mean this is a neat trick but what's it for you know um flash forward to uh to like 2021 and my former employer got uh everyone uh, quest twos for like some team building thing, which didn't work out great. 
Uh, but I jumped into VR chat because a friend was like, oh, we should check this out. And I got hooked um, because, yeah, all of the, the creativity, like all the worlds and avatars that people are making are just incredible. Um, and it gave me really like early web vibes. You know, it felt like the 90s Internet in a way, like everyone's trying something mm. and seeing what sticks kind of thing. And that really got me that like really made me feel uh, feel passionate about it and about, um, yeah, contributing. <laughs> Can I ask you, Tiki, because I've heard of like bosses just spontaneously grabbing some VR headsets <laughs> and trying to be like, oh, we're going to we're going to try out this this thing. Can I ask what 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 did they try to do? I, it's the one you would expect. We ended up trying Horizon Workrooms, uh, the, the meta one, and it wasn't great. It wasn't. I think we used it like once. And the limitation that bugged me right out of the gate was the fact that, OK, you set up a desk. Like you import your desk basically and you tell it where your keyboard is so you can see your keyboard. And that's fine. That makes sense because you're seeing your monitor in, in VR. That's cool. But there's this collaboration thing where it has a whiteboard and that whiteboard has to be exactly two meters behind your desk. You're in VR. You could place it anywhere, but it's prescriptive <laughs> about where you can put the whiteboard. And that's just absurd, you know? And so it didn't, it didn't go anywhere. <laughs> That is very weird. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know Thank if it's you. changed since. It, it might have gotten better. This was a few years ago, but yeah, it didn't work for us. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that. Yeah. All right. On uh, how about you? Um, actually, we'll. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Let's keep going. As you wish. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess so. I was also. I sort of mentioned this earlier, but I was also a really big VR skeptic, and I never would have. I never thought that I ever wanted to work in VR, and I don't think that I ever would have said that I wanted to work in anything even tangentially related to the games industry, although I like games and gaming, but I was like, yeah, that's not really me. Um, but same sort of thing, like when I finally got into VR chat, it uh, it started firing off those early 90s internet vibes, and I was like, this is it. Like, this is what, this is what got me interested in the internet in the first place, like realizing that this was a space that people could kind of do what they want, explore their identities, um, create a whole new world out of whole cloth. And it, it was like seeing that happen again. Um, and then having had the benefit of, you know, a couple of years of career in the design industry and realizing like, oh, maybe they're asking for me, like, right? like reading the job description <laughs> me like, yeah, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So that, I think that was, yeah, it was, it, it was a bit of a surprise to me, but a pleasant one. Very nice. And JC, what about you? Oh, I was under the assumption the question wasn't that relevant for me because I did start uh, like being a hardcore VR fan. Um, but I, I guess I could take a shot at it. I, I mean, <laughs> so even starting like a, v, a hardcore VR fan, because even if you're not a hardcore, uh, even if you are a hardcore VR fan, you know, not necessarily want to work in the industry. So did, were, when you started being a hardcore VR fan, did you already kind of know that that was like something you wanted to do as a career path? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I I picked up VR as a career path within uh, an hour of putting on the headset the first time, right? I was just struck with the whole... You know, I'm experiencing perspective correct stereopsis. I've noticed that like it has total control over my vision. Like just as an HCI person, I just immediately latched into it. I was like, this is my future. It just it just is. And I just dove right in. So pretty simple story, love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. Flair. I feel so technologically less advanced compared to everyone else, especially since so many people here on this panel are engineers <laughs> um, or in some way, you know, able to use Unity and stuff versus I just do the social media things. Um, but I remember the first time I put on the VR headset, it was like magic, right? And you all probably mm -hmm. remember your first times. It was just an entirely different reality, an entirely different world in front of you. Um, and I think I fell into the VR industry the same way that I fell into game development, which was I didn't think it was a job until I saw other people doing it, <laughs> right? I, it, when I got laid off from Microsoft in January, I actually didn't even consider applying to VR chat until I was on VR chat talking with a friend. Um, and they're like, oh, VR chat has jobs. Why don't you just see if they're looking for someone like you? And I was like, my God, I forgot that was an option. <laughs> and it just worked out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, spontaneous in a way, almost. Yeah. Um, 
Well, then leading into the next question, and I'll start with you, Flair, and going uh, back down the line, because you said, you know, I I do the social media stuff. So actually, I I want to ask, what is a typical day at VR chat like for each of you? Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I wake up and I check to see how many fires there are. (laughs) You never know. Right, you check Slack, Slack you check social, social media, media. You're like something on fire, fire. Are the server still up? Are we all still cool? Right, right, right. right. Just check. Just um, from there, there usually, usually I plan out, out what type of community we want to tap into. into we want to write for the next couple days. Um, there's more to social media than just posting on Twitter, but to simplify it, basically, it's like how do we find the people who are interested in VR chat? How do we talk to them? How are they currently talking about us? Things like that. Um, so I help plan around that as well as figure out the communications for um, how do we reach, you know, players about new updates, things that they might need to know about, um, server outages, things like that. I see. Oh, thank you. <laughs> first, first thing in the morning, <laughs> see if there are any fires. It's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, JC, what about you? How else will we stay uh, warm? So- <laughs> most mornings, Indeed. I, I, I've got most of my work planned out for uh, the foreseeable future and I, I, I can't go into too much detail right now they have me working on onboarding a new user experience and I think that's the most resolution I'm allowed to give for that typically I, uh, I roll out of bed I grab an energy drink um, and I look at my calendar and I see who's online and I say hi to the people that I would need to be working with um but then if there's nothing on the calendar i usually just get right into it like i just wake up rise and grind and i just work on it until i feel as though i am out of energy for the day um play test it a lot um yeah very much just uh get right to it kind of thing it's nice not having a commute i can wake up in the morning and already be at my (laughs) at my job so that's that's my one of my favorite parts Working from home is, is definitely a blessing to have. Yes, indeed. Yes, mm-hmm. sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, so this is kind of cliched, but like I wouldn't say that there is a typical day in the sense of one of the reasons I love working for VR Chat is that the problems are always different. I guess one way to say it is that something's on fire always, but I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> put it that way. Um, but there is, like there's always, there's always, like every day is something interesting and new, which is pretty cool. Um, as I do uh, design and the team lead stuff, basically, like my day or my day consists of a lot of communication of all kinds. Um, so I'm either you know in mirror boards drawing and sketching things, or I'm on the phone an awful lot, like around the headset a lot, talking to people. Um, because VR Chat is international, we have people on pretty much every time zone and uh, I think almost every continent. Um, so I happen to be in uh, Central Europe, and so I get to basically get started be a few hours before everybody else. I wouldn't say everybody else before most people come online and so i usually take advantage of that to kind of go through yeah all of our systems and kind of catch up on things and take notes for the day um and then the meetings start and it's like wall to wall because one of the things about working at home is that you forget that you need to schedule time between things um but i generally (laughs) end up with like a good six or seven hours of just talking um then go to bed or i log into vr chat you said you're in Central Central Europe and you're kind of up uh, yeah. a few hours before everyone else. Are you kind of unique in that you're in Central Europe or are most people sort of I mean, we, US-based? Again, we're, or? We have a fair amount. Like we're pretty pretty international. I don't know that we're good, mm. we say those numbers, but like we have a pretty big uh, chunk of people in Europe. Um, also, again, folks tend to set their hours. So we have a kind of like core time around which we try to overlap, but people are it's kind of 24 seven in a sense, like someone is always online and doing something. Um, Mm -hmm. So I am central Europe, but I also tend to work pretty much East coast us hours, honestly. Okay. That's, that's really cool. I mean, it's good. It's nice to hear that, you know, there is an international team for a truly international platform. So, you know, that's, that is, is a really good thing to hear. Tiki, how about you? I would say you? that's also unusual. Oh, sorry. I'll say for, sorry, no, I was just going to say that, I, that if just a peek at the industry, like, so I've worked at a lot of different size companies and the most international company I worked for was IBM and we had 400,000. But even that, which wow. is truly international, like we compartmentalize the roles so much. So I would sometimes mm-hmm. work with international teams, but not at all the way we do at VR Chat, where we are literally on the same team, but in different time zones, like daily, not just mm. doing handoffs. Um and that's a kind of unique, actually, I, at least in my experience. Um, 
Yeah, just thought that was a, a, a really different experience. But I'm guessing that core time does help as far as like coordinating, you know, everything. If people are in different time zones on the same team. Yeah, at some point you have to actually get some synchronous time. I mean, we try to do asynchronous, but at some point it's just faster and easier to chat. So as we all know, mm -hmm. in the synchronous virtual world in which we are in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of what's already been said, I, I feel like it's a lot of just collaborating, working on, you know, reviewing other people's code, discussing how we're going to proceed with things. Uh, on the website, there's always something cooking. Um, not necessarily things I can talk about, but always something. Um, and uh, yeah, just like working together, there's a lot of room for overlap between teams. We're kind of, you know, getting to check in on what, what each other are doing a lot, which is really cool and, and give each other feedback, which is, you know, always helpful. Um, and, you know, uh, like we, we jump into, into VR chat, like we do actually use it. We're in here uh, like twice a week at least um hanging out and and sometimes testing new features and like it's really cool everyone just kind of gets to contribute to a bit of everything even if it's not the specific thing that they're you know hired to do necessarily um which is a really nice vibe that is hey, very so, cool. hey, so as i mentioned i come from kind of a corporate background because like mm -hmm. right before this i was at cisco and then kind of a series of smaller and smaller companies before that um Everybody was fully remote during the pandemic. So I've been at two other companies that tried being fully remote. But the biggest difference here is that people have fun and also chat about non-work things during the day. Like we, we communicate yeah. over fun things. Um, Cisco, nobody ever talked about anything, you know, <laughs> that wasn't directly work related. So it was just so mm -hmm. lonely here. I, I think I had more fun in the first like month or two here than I did a couple of years at Cisco. Um, <laughs> And I guess from that, the other thing that's very new to me is that I'm not used to work being also fun, uh, which means that I, <laughs> I've i only been here a little while and I'm still adjusting to like stop working at a certain time. <laughs> sometimes I wake up at like 4 a.m. and I'm like, uh, uh, shaders, shaders. Okay, well, no, no, yeah. bad. bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is the trap with uh, with working from home and like asynchronously. Like it's it's very easy to fall into the trap. Um, you've got to you know bring up your discipline to keep your hours reasonable and you know not overwork mm -hmm. yourself. Um, but, but I can yeah. understand almost how can you not, you know, especially when you're someone who's loved VR chat and used VR chat so much and created within VR chat, even like, like, you yeah, know, yeah. before starting working for VR chat, you know, it's almost an extension of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what my day was before when I was working at larger corporate companies is like, I would spend 40 hours a week, you know, day to day job, don't really care about it, have to do it. And then like, Immediately after that, go and work on OpenVR advanced settings and Cat's Blender plug, all the little things that I've been working on, um, and just hammer away at those until it's about bedtime, then go to bed. And I'm like, wait, did I just work more? And it's just kind of the same thing, <laughs> but I'm getting better at it. You're very much discouraged from doing that. It's not a... <laughs> I mean, that is fair. Work, work life balance is definitely important. But yeah, I could see how, how the lines get blurred when it's truly something that you, you enjoy doing in, already. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pivoting um, a little bit, uh, I know earlier it was mentioned that, you know, um, one of you saw VR chat like on Twitter and people exploring their identities in VR chat, exploring who they really are. And that's something that I think, of course, a lot of us here can relate to and understand, you know, and have experience. And I would like to just talk about that a little bit for, for all of you as well. Like, how, how have you found that, you know, VR or have you found that VR has helped you discover or explore your, your personal identity? Um, and if so, do you, you know, mind telling us a little bit about that? Um, I mean, so I might be a little bit of an outlier. I, I definitely, my personal, like my personal identity, I don't think it was VR chat in particular that I discovered it on, but absolutely online social spaces were completely vital. Um, I think I'd figured out most of myself before I found, you know, VR chat in particular, but just some sort of online, usually kind of fluffy social space was, has been a, more or less a constant in my life. 
Yeah, I, I'm sort of the same way. I did a lot of that stuff on, on IRC. But at the same time, I, I absolutely love, you know, I, I loved Second Life for that as well, like getting to explore those spaces. And and yeah, I, I think VRChat is like the next sort of bleeding edge of, of being able to explore identity. The fact that, you know, it, it's just so accepting. It's just so you could be whatever whatever you want to try. Try it out. See if it works for you. If it doesn't, that's cool. If it does, great. Um, it could mean something, it could not. Both of those are fine. Uh, it's it's really nice to see that, um, and I really appreciate that. Um, and I, I, tangent, I'm really glad that that is like how the work environment is as well. Like working at VR Chat, it's it's the same kind of thing of like bring yourself, your whole self. It's fine. You are who you are, and you're here to do what you're doing, and that's all cool. Um, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, that is something yeah, I noticed, so. like, from uh, the VR chat. Uh, I don't know how many people in the audience have actually checked out, like, uh, as far as the career page when you try to apply or something like that. But I thought it was really, like, accepting, very nice that VR chat actually has so many options for different pronouns and preferred names and, and things like that. So I, I totally understand what you're saying when you're, like, VR chat is, like, bring your whole self, your true self. So, yeah, that's very good. Mm. From yeah, what I remember, I was interviewed. Oh, okay. no, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. Yeah. I was just oh, no. gonna say, from what I remember, I was interviewed by um, a kangaroo, anime people, <laughs> um, a robot, and then yep. polygonal guy. So, it's <laughs> oh, so, so you're yeah. interviewed yeah. in yeah. VR yeah. chat. You know, I yeah. I had never actually yeah. considered that that might might yep. be the case. Kind of, you know, I expected maybe Zoom call or, or something mm -hmm. like that, but. Actually, well, interview with NVR chat. That's very cool. Yeah, not not everyone you is, and not option. everyone. Yeah, you 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 can you can pick and choose, but like, why not? Let's do it. Uh, let's see, you know, <laughs> what it's like interviewing in VR. It's a surreal experience, but like, really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say that. So, so I think part of that is really similar to like. I think by the time I arrived at VR chat, um. I wasn't necessarily doing any uh, identity exploration, although certainly the early internet and virtual worlds was absolutely critical to that. Like, I don't, honestly, I think this is probably familiar to a lot of people, but I don't know that I would have uh, made it through my teens and early 20s without that community, like without having the internet community around me. Um, and there's certainly something to be said about like finding your chosen family and finding your people and it's super yeah. critical. I do not know what my life would have been like if VRChat had existed when I was that age. Like I sometimes think about that and it, kind of blows my mind and um i like the folks here who this is this is their onboard i i don't know i you're amazing to me so i just i don't know what to say about that but it's, it's pretty pretty amazing um the one thing i'll say that's kind of kind of interesting is that because of this openness at vr chat itself like this is the very first place that i have ever felt comfortable kind of collapsing these lives like i have me mm -hmm. my professional self my fluffy self like and i i have never been a furry at work before ever like, and so a little bit like we have, of course, like internal systems. I have a human photo on my internal system profile, and I find that that feels somewhat weird at VR chat. Like I'm actually in the, in the minority for that, which is very funny. Um, so that's a, that's a kind of cool and interesting new experience. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I did that too when I first signed up and I just, I just switched over to a, a fluffy See? picture because it's like, I why not? Feel like... Why, why am I limiting myself? <laughs> It's great. <laughs> I split the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, identity exploration. Boy, that's a deep one. Um, I, I, I had I had always been the kind of person to enjoy sort of uh, doing that thing, right? Where you're using your your cognition to like project future forms of yourself and distill the parts you like and try getting rid of the ones you don't like and all that fun stuff. Um, but I had kind of put identity exploration on the back burner for a little bit, uh, cause I was like to actually take on some of these forms that I had really, really, really strongly bonded with before VR was going to be this massive exercise and like mostly waiting for the yeah, biotech industry to like actually move. Um, and so I, I was in the phase of like, okay, well, I'm going to build up my skills and resources so that one day, maybe I'll get to be the cool thing I actually see myself as. And then VR came along and I was like, whoa, digital body freedom. That's wow. Mm -hmm. um, and it was definitely VR chat that 
really reinforced that. Like I had done some exploration, some explorations. I had a unity application where I rigged together my own avatar and it was this cool little thing. And I'm like, Whoa, okay. All right, cool. That's a thing. But it was uh, VR chats, full body tracking. And the fact that the community had already done such incredible aesthetic work with the avatars. So I was going through public uh, spaces and looking at public avatars and trying them out in the mirror. Um, and if I had had to make all my own artwork from scratch to do that identity exploration, it would have taken me forever. Um, but yeah, I definitely remember there was one night where I ran into uh, a, 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 something almost identical to this avatar. It was like a public version. Um, and it just it did something to my body schema. I something clicked, and I'm like, "Whoa, that's mm -hmm. holy, that's me. That's that's like actually me, not that flesh prison I see IRO. That that's me." And I just <laughs> I sat there, standing in the mirror, just watching my self image rewrite itself, like that loop where like you can see your mirror, like your mirror neurons going off, and it's like 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 you just feel the avatar like like just sink into your self image. Um, and I just ran with that. And I just thought it was like the coolest thing. So like I wrote an entire article about how people are going to use VR for um, identity exploration in a way that's like super fast so that like they'll be able to like try out future forms that one day they may, you know, drag back into the physical world as, you know, biotech gets better. Um, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely love this stuff. <laughs> Think about it a lot. <laughs> I wow. would love to read that article. That sounds super, super interesting. <laughs> I also think that's something uh -huh. a, a lot of us can relate to, that click, as you call it, when you put on the avatar and you're like, oh my goodness, this is me, this is who I am. I know I definitely felt that. Yeah, I was just thinking the same. Like the first time I put on an avatar with bunny ears, I was like, oh, I these. <laughs> I've never worn anything like this before, but now I think I'm going to pick exclusively avatars that have bunny ears and this is just where i am um and just having the freedom on vr chat to be able to change your you know expression anytime you want is so freeing um that was one of the first things that really drew me to vr chat right is i could pick a day where i want to be really masculine i just pick a masculine avatar i go out in the world and everyone just perceives me that way you know i pick exactly what i look like people perceive me the way that i want to be perceived um and that was just a such a powerful moment for me um being able to do that all the time <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um i would also like to ask you know you are all like trans and non-binary gender non-conforming people you know working at vr chat working in the vr xr space and i know that there are a lot of people in the audience sort of interested in getting into that space themselves um you know, unfortunately, the world is not always a, you know, kind place to us. And so I wanted to ask all of you, like, what advice would you have for trans and gender nonconforming people looking to enter the VRXR industry or perhaps the tech industry more generally? Um, so... Definitely for the tech industry. Um, when I started presenting FEM, I noticed there was, you know, some people started taking me a little less seriously, especially at the last couple companies I was at. Um, and I don't even think it was like particularly transphobia. It's just like kind of classic sexism, you know, mm. same old, same old, nothing has changed. Um, I don't, there's not even a shred of that here. Um, it's been a much nicer experience. So it's definitely going to be a very different experience company to company and just kind of where you end up. Um, it's really hard to say how you should approach that. Um, definitely, if you're trying to break into the industry, the idealist in me says you should always try and focus on a company that's going to be like fully accepting and like, you know, be your full self when you're interviewing and everything. Um, just so you can see red flags ahead of time. Um, but it's really down to your life situation. If there's no other way for you to break in, you know, you can kind of coast on it. It's There's no kind of, like, all, all applicable advice. You kind of have to use your best judgment. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I... Uh, 
when I first actually considered this, you know, I was thinking of it as sort of a, a traditional tech industry type job where I had the same kind of preconceptions, you know, of like the the sort of gender affirming sexism of like, ah, but you perceive me as feminine. That's what I want. But also you perceive me as feminine, which means you devalue my input. Hmm. <laughs> Complicated feelings. Um, but I, I, I never never had that problem here and i i think i you know to some extent i feel like i got lucky i i like built a professional reputation a gender ago and managed to drag most of it with me um you <laughs> know good. and uh yeah i i think i got lucky so i don't think i have an amazing uh bevy of advice but i think for this industry in particular find the place that lets you be yourself and like bring your whole self and do something that you enjoy uh and good luck, really. <laughs> um, I believe in you. You know, it, it's possible. Yeah, man. That uh, honestly, I that I just want to repeat that it's possible. I guess, um, really. Uh, but it's so hard to give advice because uh, the thing is, everybody's in a different place, right? And there's also um, uh, plenty of issues of personal safety and comfort. And mm -hmm. it, I don't know that I feel qualified to tell anybody like how and where what you know how to how to present yourself um and the tech industry i guess i mean the world in general but the tech industry is still insanely sexist yeah and not not in a good way um i agree uh vr chat isn't but that is also not like it, it's that's unusual in my experience um and i also say so yeah i am a non-binary person but um I, maybe it's also that again that I'm a bit older, but that was sort of really hard earned. Like there really weren't a lot of uh, examples for that, and so I spent most of my life uh, passing as straight white dude. Like that was kind of like, and I'm the thing that I'm. I guess I'm trying to get to is like I am able to do that, and so I also feel very unqualified um, to be able to give advice because. I, I won't say that I'm necessarily fully comfortable in that role, but I can I can turn it on and. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's not advice. Don't do that. If you can find a place that you don't have to do that, great. Don't put up with any shit, but also do that from a safe space. So uh, that's really hard. It's hard to give advice there. Sometimes the yeah, back and know. forth is just the the reality of the situation, which you know I think is something we we all kind of either have experienced or understand. Yes. Things are changing. Sorry, JC. Oh. Yeah, yeah, things are changing. Yeah. And there are, that's, I guess, why I, re I really liked what Tiki said. Like, it, there is hope and there is possibility. And you might have to work a little bit extra to find that, but it is possible. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm not loaded up with uh, great advice either. Uh, I guess a good heuristic is VR is definitely one of the best places for this in the entire tech industry. So if you're going to go anywhere, like, go VR uh, if you can. Um, and then if you are looking at the VR space, um, the way the way an organization presents avatars may be a good heuristic for how they feel about identity, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it, at, like mm -hmm. any heuristic, don't rely on it too much. But beyond that, I've always been a polymorph and really comfortable being a polymorph. So like... For many of you, what I did to, you know, find my way would not be uh, relevant or helpful, right? Like, I can't just say, hey, this is a company full of dudes, just go be masculine here. Because for many of you, that just wouldn't fly. Um, so I don't know what to tell you other than, you know, be cunning and uh, do what you got to do. And <clears throat> uh, I will echo the fact that there are comfortable places out there. There are places out there where people will treat you with the respect you deserve. Um, and they'll, you know, see you for how you want to be seen and all that stuff. So, you know, persistence, definitely persistence. Don't give up. Sorry, I would also say, like add to like, lean into your networks, right? And this is one network, but like find your community and and ask and find your allies and build your team. Like that's just the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that's good advice. See, listen, listen on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm look, I'm digging. <laughs> That's honestly super solid advice too. Like finding people like you already in the industry if you can. And you know, if you need to lean on your friends who know each other, things like that, go for it. Um, I've been super lucky throughout my entire career in game development. I've always been trans, I've always been out and non-binary, and everyone has always accepted me for it. 
Um, in my last two teams that I've worked on, over half of my team was trans. Um, and I was super fortunate to be in that position, right? Because not only could we openly talk about like our experiences, but we also just understood each other on a deeper level, which made it easier to work with each other, made it easier to align on certain things, especially in communications. Um, so when I was applying for jobs like this, I wanted to be as upfront about who I was as possible because I knew it was possible, especially in the VR industry. Um, I want to say most of VR is run by queer furries, if I have to be honest. Like, look at our panel. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of us Yeah, here. that um, that is kind of the other point. I, like, the secret is we, we collectively, all of you and all of us, we run this place. You know, we own this place. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is kind of our native habitat. Like, it's yours to, you know, to, to steward. So, yeah. Yeah, be open and honest. There's people here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got another good one. They Don't be afraid to carve your own path, right? There's a lot of opportunities in mm -hmm. VR. It's still a green field, mm -hmm. right? If you if you have mm -hmm. any connections at all, you can scrounge up a little bit of resources to work with. You could make the next big thing in this industry. Um, that's, I don't know, I, I, I like that one. I, I've done a little bit of that myself. <laughs> That is actually excellent mm -hmm. advice, JC, and a perfect segue into my uh, next and, and final question. Maybe this one will be a bit easier, but just general advice that you would give to people looking to enter these industries. You all are on different teams, so I'm sure that looks quite different for each <clears throat> each one of you. But, you know, what would you say would be good to either like work on personally or to study or, you know, I, I heard networking mentioned. So uh, could you give some advice there? Uh, we'll start. <laughs> JC, you, you, yeah, JC, you want to, since, since you're segued into it, you want to start and then uh, we'll go flare and on and come back around. Sure, absolutely. Okay, yeah. So let's see. The things that I would consider most important for trying to get into the VR industry. First one is skills. Um, it's it's a very technical discipline, and it's very uh, <laughs> multi um, multidisciplinary. So trying to have a wide skill set that you grind on as hard as you can, very 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 useful. Um, people with skills in VR are indispensable right now, um, and some of those, like a big one that a lot of people in VR don't do well right now is, uh, and this is of course my bias speaking, uh, human factors, <laughs> right? Human computer interaction. A lot of people in VR right now, or when I say people, I mean organizations and teams, they're still very much thinking in terms of like the Xerox Park user interface model where you have a mouse and a keyboard and you know you have the ergonomics of sitting at a desk all day. VR is not like mm. that. Um, so like everything you can learn or understand about how a human body mind works is metaphorically worth its weight in gold in this industry. The next thing after having a, a good skill set is being able to prove you have it, a portfolio. Super, super helpful, right? Because you can be the most skilled person on earth. And if nobody like believes you, you're going nowhere. So a strong portfolio, super helpful. Do whatever you have to. Uh, to get that portfolio, even if it means being like, hey, boss, I can we like get this one thing out from under NDA? Because like, you know, it, it makes us look good and it makes me look good and it makes you look good. Um, do that if you can. And then the other thing is other people have mentioned network. Network is super important um, because fundamentally, if you are employed, it is because you are solving people's problems and you are bringing value to the business. Um, and so having a good track on who's working on what problems and who has what needs uh, puts you in a great position to be like, hey, you're struggling with that. Maybe I can help you out. Or like, mm -hmm. I, I am perfect for this. I can help you out with that. No problem, because I've been training to get good at this. Um, so, yeah, that's that's sort of my advice for getting into the, uh, the VR industry. That's excellent advice. Thank you. Yeah, just to hop off of that, I, I can't emphasize enough how powerful that portfolio is. Um, and if you're struggling to figure out how you want to market your portfolio, what I recommend is having a lot of visuals for it, um, especially just being able to show either a video or even a GIF of the stuff you're working on so that someone can instantly figure out like, oh, okay, I see the feature you worked on. I see how it works. I see the thought process behind it. Um, showing examples of, you know, your mock-ups, why you did things certain ways, um, the being able to list the things you worked on in a project is very useful. And if you're just starting out in game development in particular, 
throw yourself at as many things as you can <laughs> because you never know what's going to stick, right? You want to throw yourself into a lot of different projects. It's really good on your portfolio and it proves that you can do a lot of different things. Um, I also want to emphasize the networking thing again. There's one of my mentors from GDC a long time ago. Uh, something she said is that she would offer to new students all the time, like, you know, hit me up if you ever want a portfolio review. Um, talk to me if you ever want advice on something. And no one would ever reach out. Mm. Um, so oh. that's something that she realized was something that mentors were struggling with, which is that people were too afraid to reach out for advice. So mm. if you ever have a connection with someone or someone offers you that chance, take it. Don't be afraid. Just take it. Yeah, I would agree with all of that and underscore that I think one of the cool things about tech in general and VR specifically is that it is pretty open in Greenfield. And if you can do, you can probably find a job. Um, and that's really important to know, I think. Um, the only thing I'll add on top of that is that I, uh, although I think that's true and many of the absolute best people I know in the industry didn't receive formal training, I also do have that background um, and I also have taught. And so I also value that. So if that is a path that you want, if you're interested in doing the the sort of like academic path, you totally can. My one piece of advice there would be um, there are a lot of different types of programs that one could be in and some of them specialize and some of them are more like all of the things. And my general recommendation would be to actually pick a specialty that you like. Um, so having gone through a couple of the general ones, they're interesting, but you end up kind of spread out. Um, and I would, again, I would say like, you know, if you're, if you're super interested in this, like, and you're like, I'm a coder, uh, go deep on that and really like learn how to code extremely well. And you can always do the other work either on your own time or maybe do that as part of your job. But I would, I personally just have seen over and over again, folks who come out of these sort of generalist programs and then they're like, I'm ready to go. And it doesn't quite match. Whereas you can more easily find a, a, a path from out of academia and into industry. If you're like, I do this, I am also interested in this, but I am very good at this thing. Um, yeah. So that. Um, I feel vaguely underqualified to talk specifically about the VR industry. I feel like a little bit of an outsider, even though I snuck my way in. But I guess that means my <laughs> advice is there are other things than working on, you know, the game engine. Uh, you know, you can work on uh, writing APIs. You can work on the front end. You can work on design. There's all sorts of spaces, even okay. within, uh, you know, the VR industry that are not necessarily working on a, you know, on, on that thing. So if you... If you have a different specialization that you think might be useful, like there are all sorts of jobs that you can get here. Um, I, I work on the website, you know. Um, some of you have probably seen it, some of you probably haven't, but it's still there and it does something useful. So, um, yeah. Um, and yeah, like, you know, to reiterate the networking thing, uh, having come from a background in like the, the tech industry, so much of that is who you know and who you can, you know, then know because you know someone who knows someone um so yeah just like talking to people talking shop uh exploring as much as you can um in the broader tech industry i feel like portfolios are one of the hardest things because often you're working on something that either no one else can actually can't see share. or you're not allowed to really discuss mm -hmm. and that's really difficult there's so many things that i worked on in my career that like don't exist anymore no one could ever actually see unless they were in this very specific thing so um you know, I th I think you've just got to like make sure you you know you know what you're doing. Uh, find your niche and y yeah, find the people that are going to connect you to the jobs. I think. Um, yeah, and uh, and good luck <laughs> is the other part. I mean, I would echo what they say. I mean, find your niche. There's something that you're good at that you really enjoy that you might be surprised to find out is not everyone's favorite thing to do. Just Almost everyone who's working here is, you know, working on what they're passionate about as much as they possibly can. Um, I think even like most of the positions at VR Chat specifically aren't like game industry specific. Like, um, I'm not a game industry vet. Uh, Tiki's not a game industry vet. Like, you know, nope. you can get in through just having a very specific skill set that's like, you know, kind of lacking at whatever company you're targeting. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I definitely found my way in through my open source projects. Um, it is basically doing a lot of free work, but you do get to show it off. Like you, no one can tell you not to show it off. So if you really enjoy that, you can make it. Um, so 
that's more or less I would say. If you're encouraged, if you're currently in college, I can't recommend enough trying to go for a paid, definitely paid internship if you can find that to <laughs> kind of figure out what you're good at. Because a lot of yes. more general programs will kind of, you know, point you in the right directions. But once you're actually working on it, you'll know that this is your favorite thing. Wow, that is all really solid advice. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you all in general for joining me today, telling all of us here about your experiences, about yourselves, about how you got here, and giving us some insight into like the inner workings of VR chat. I think that that's, that's very cool. Um, yes, I everyone, if you could please give our panelists a round of applause. Thank you all so much for being here. No, thank you.